Okay, here's another tutorial for beginning Blender users. And in this case, we're going to focus on applying a rotation, a scale, and a location with the Control A key. So if I select an object and oops, Control A, it brings up this menu like this. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this here in a second. So if I'm building a model, let me just add something to the scene. I'll add a cylinder to the scene. Better give it a color. All right, and it's oriented this way. Here's Z up. In fact, if, even in the local axis, Z is up because I haven't changed it. But if I rotate, let me, well, let me make a copy, Shift D, X. So now I have two copies. If I take this one and rotate it, say 90 degrees on Y, so R, Y, 90. And that's oriented this way. And I'm just going to scale it down a little bit here. So there's my, since I'm local axis mode at the moment, here's the local Z is in this case. But in this case, local Z is pointed this way. All right, so what if I decided I wanted to start making uh, some kind of object? Let's just scale this up on Z a little bit. And I'm going to move this here. And like maybe I was going to do uh, like a traffic light, right? And I wanted to use an array modifier to put these in place on here. Well, normally you're thinking, a lot of times you're just set to global axis mode and you think of this in the Z direction. Well, I like to keep everything pretty consistent. So if I was to take this object and go over to the modifier and add an array modifier here, by default, notice what it's doing. It's, it's set at one on X, meaning it's moving it along the X axis. So it's put two objects along the x-axis, but that's showing up as z. But that's not right, but that's because I'm not in local axis mode. And there my local axis is actually, x is actually pointing down. All right, so that kind of throws things off as far as keeping things consistent for me. So what I want to do in this case is, before applying the modifier, though I could actually apply it right now, is I'm going to just press Control A. In fact, I'll do that. I'll do Control A, and I'm going to apply a rotation to this. And what that means, it's going to make this orientation of this object right now as the actual global orientation. So if I do Control A and press rotation, suddenly now Z is facing back up again, even though I'm in local axis mode and in global axis. In both cases, it's what it's saying is there's no default rotation to either of these objects, even though this one has obviously been rotated. But no longer, according to the system, this is not a rotated object anymore. So it's fixed into place. So now Z is truly up in this case. And that's why that object 108, even though I show that it has a count of two, it must have gone inside here. In fact, let's keep going. Let's add three or four. There it goes out that way. So then, then to apply it, then instead of using the x-axis here, I have to change it on the z-axis like this. Well, I'll just use the menu and it's going to go up, but I want negative z to go down. And then I would position maybe one there for my traffic light and then there for another traffic light like that. And that'd be the basis. And then just set it in here like this. So a lot of times I'll work. I won't even apply this. I'll just leave that like it is. It doesn't really matter. I mean, we can go make a copy of these two and do shift dy and move it over there. Or wait a second, from according to the other lesson that we just did, is we could do this, I could do Alt D, like this, Y. And that means I have a linked copy of that. So then when I come into here, and if I go into edit mode on this, and I want to grab, say, one portion of it, let me just say grab this bottom face, because that would get deleted. And I go X and delete only the face there, like that, it's gone, right? we need a light to be able to see it. So let's go over here. Let's leave edit mode and go over here and zoom into this. And sure enough, if I look on this one, it's also missing on this object as well. All right. So, and you could do the same thing with locations. You know, you uh, if I've moved an object out of the way, I'm going to apply this anyway. Oops, can't got to be out of, can't be in Oh, can't apply to multi-user data. Okay, forget that idea. Can't do it to multi-user data. Never tried that before. All right, so I'll get rid of that. So I'll apply it now. All right, so, well, that's interesting, though. I actually didn't even know that. Well, so that kind of gives you an idea, but then the same way you can do it with location. If I move this and this in the scene, I look at N, and I find the location of that. Here's the location here, way off in here. But if I do Control A, and apply a location to that, suddenly it's zeroed out. So that's really my zero location for that object. And then you can do the same thing with the scale. So it kind of sets these as the default rotation, location, and scale. And I use this all the time. 
Okay. All right. Well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.